So, Mike, it's been a while since we've had an episode just blasting through a strange list on Wikipedia. Yeah, you know I love these usually, but like, um, I don't know, this one makes me a little bit nervous. I mean, this particular article doesn't seem to cover podcasters, so I think we're safe. Because today we're talking about a whole host of accidents that have taken place on TV and film sets. You know what this means. You know what's coming. <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Kick, kick us off. We'll start in 1914, when Across the Border cast member Grace McHugh was filming a scene where her character was crossing the Arkansas River in a boat. The boat capsized, and a camera operator jumped in to save her, dragging her onto a sandbar, which unfortunately turned out to be quicksand. They both drowned. <laughs> oh, no. It's, not, it's like, let me take you out of the water and put you into quicksand. Uh, yeah, that, that situation went from bad to worse for those people. Mm-hmm. In 1919, silent era star Wallace Reed was badly injured in a train crash while filming in Oregon, working on the Valley of the Giants. His injuries caused him severe pain, and the studio supplied him with increasing quantities of morphine so he could keep working. He became addicted and died a few years later. The same year, comedian Billy Ritchie, while working on a short comedy film, was kicked in the stomach by an ostrich and sustained internal injuries. In 1920, actor and comedian Harold Lloyd picked up what he thought was a prop bomb with a lit fuse on the set of Haunted Spooks. He realized all too late that the bomb was real. It detonated blowing off the thumb and right finger of his right hand and also temporarily blinding him. For the rest of his career, Lloyd concealed his missing fingers with a prosthetic glove. Really? Like in every movie he's wearing a glove? Wikipedia says it. It must be true. Actress Barbara Lamar injured her ankle while filming Souls for Sale in 1923. Like Wallace Reed, she succumbed to morphine addiction after the accident and died a few years later. They're just handing this stuff out like candy. I know, morphine was running wild in the 1920s. A year later, Buster Keaton was knocked to the ground while working on Sherlock Jr. During a routine physical exam some 11 years later, an x-ray revealed that Keaton had fractured his neck. He was knocked unconscious by cannon fire several years later working on another project. Keaton was just a total badass, just walking around, fractured (laughs) neck, no problem. (laughs) Pretty boss. Don't worry about me. 1924 wasn't done yet, though. Martha Mansfield was severely burned on the set of the Warrens of Virginia when a match tossed by a cast member ignited her Civil War costume. Oh, no. Her chauffeur was injured trying to put out the fire that claimed the actress's life. Two things on this. One, bravo chauffeur. Like, I don't know if that was your job, but, like, you got in there and tried to deal with that situation. And two, why are people just throwing matches around? (laughs) It seems silly. 1928's Noah's Ark was fraught with injuries. Three people died, one man lost a leg, and a number were injured in a scene where several hundred extras were swept off their feet during the Great Flood. These deaths were instrumental in the introduction of the first film safety regulations introduced the following year. The film Such Men Are Dangerous claimed 10 lives in 1930 when two aircraft used for filming collided over the ocean. Families of the men who were lost took legal action against the Fox Film Company, but the courts ruled in favor of the latter. 1936, the change of the light brigade is one of the worst ones so far. A stuntman was killed when he fell off his horse and landed on a broken sword Mm. that was lying on the field, unfortunately wedged in such a position that his blade was sticking straight up. Also, due to the use of trip wires, three dozen horses had their legs broken and had to be shot during filming, resulting in the U.S. Congress getting involved, passing laws to protect animals used in motion pictures. Three dozen horses? Mm Mm-hmm. And a sword sticking straight up to the sky, because that's the safest way to store a blade. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. The Wizard of Oz has some pretty famous examples of accidents. Margaret Hamilton was badly burned during a scene in which her character, the Wicked Witch of the West, vanished in a burst of flame and smoke. A delay in activating a trap door left her exposed to the pyrotechnic device. And her stunt double was also later injured. And Buddy Ebsen suffered a severe allergic reaction to his Tin Man makeup that resulted in a collapsed lung and lifelong breathing issues. He was unable to continue working on the production and was replaced by Jack Haley. Ooh, man. I've heard that about the Tin Man. That's... What a terrible way to find out you're allergic to face paint. In 1941, Orson Welles tripped down a staircase, chipping his ankle bone. 
forcing him to use a wheelchair for the next two weeks while working on Citizen Kane. The same year, an anti-British propaganda film made by the Germans was rumoured to include footage of extras being killed by a live landmine, but no proof of this has been firmly established. I'm going to say that's true. (laughs) That feels true to me. (laughs) Oh no! (laughs) This is, I think, the worst one we're going to read all day. Okay. The Conqueror, released in 1956, was shot downwind of the United States government's Nevada nuclear test site. Whoa-oh. Seems fine. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Director Dick Powell died of cancer in January 1963, so just a few years later. Pedro Armendariz was diagnosed with kidney cancer in 1960 and committed suicide three years later when he learned that his condition had become terminal. Susan Hayward, John Wayne, and Agnes Moorhead all died of cancer in the 1970s. Cast member actor John Hoyt died of lung cancer in 1991. The cast and crew totaled 220 people. And by 1981, 91 of them had developed some form of cancer and 46 had died of the disease. Turns out, don't shoot anything. Actually, just don't be near any nuclear test sites is probably... Seems really simple. Best call of action. I think it's time we should take a break so Please. we can everyone can calm down a little bit. Make your next move with Squarespace. They're sponsoring this week's show. Squarespace lets you easily create a website for your next idea. With the ability to grab unique domain names, take advantage of beautiful award-winning templates, and so much more, they are the all-in-one platform. There's nothing to install, no patches to worry about, no upgrades needed. Whether you want to create a store, blog, site for your business, or just about any website at all, Squarespace has all the tools you need. They have 24 7 support and you can sign up for a free trial today to check it out for yourself just go to squarespace.com and when you sign up for a plan use the code ungenius for 10 percent off their plan start at just 12 dollars a month but you can get that 10 percent off when you use the code ungenius to check out squarespace make your next move make your next website okay so we're up to the 1960s let's see if things improve any but honestly i i have my doubts in 1960, on the set of Flower on Stone, Russian actress Ina Burdichenko suffered third-degree burns while filming in a burning barracks and died three weeks after the accident. So the answer is no. The 1960s didn't make anything any better. Actor Peter O'Toole was nearly killed while filming Lawrence of Arabia when he fell from his camel. He also injured his hand during filming by punching through the window of a caravan while drunk. I'm not sure that's super related to the film right well you know i mean the second one (laughs) doesn't count really i don't think it's like oh laura peter o'toole stubbed his toe because he was walking around without socks on um while filming the manchurian candidate frank sinatra broke his little finger during a movement where he smashed through a table this resulted in problems with his hands for several years and is said to be one of the reasons why he pulled out of a starring role in dirty harry having to undertake surgery to alleviate pains. That's better than all you can consume morphine, I guess. I guess so. Harold Sakata burned his hand while filming a fight scene during the James Bond movie Goldfinger, in which his character Ajab gets electrocuted, but he continued to act, and the scene just kept on rolling. (laughs) It's just method acting. 1965 brought another mishap on a Bond movie. While filming Thunderball, a stunt double nearly drowned when someone accidentally disconnected both the prop oxygen line and the double's actual oxygen line whilst underwater. Woof. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> Not good. The 70s started with a tragic accident involving a director on Catch-22. John Jordan was sucked out of a B-25 Mitchell while filming a bombing scene. Granted, he refused to wear a safety harness while the plane was in flight, so I don't really know how to feel about this. Yeah, I mean, like, wear the harness, I guess? Like, uh, was it known that you had to? I feel like maybe he should have worn the harness, yeah. probably. During a Clockwork Orange pivotal brainwashing scene, Malcolm McDowell suffered a scratch cornea and temporary mm, blindness no. from having his eyes mm. propped open for so long. Oh, thanks so much for listening. I'm out of here. <laughs> Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> In The Godfather, Gianni Russo broke two ribs and cracked his elbow after James Caan threw him over a fence. <laughs> James Caan, is, that's how he's the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> and slammed a garbage can on him during a fight scene. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Calm down, James. The same year, sound technician James Chapman was mauled to death by a lion during the production of a South African film. 1973's The Exorcist seems to have been cursed. Oh. See what I did there? I made a... Joke. What? Yeah, perfect. 
Linda Blair suffered a spinal fracture due to a mechanical failure while filming a scene where her character levitates and thrashes violently. The fracture later, unfortunately, developed into scoliosis and Blair re-injured her back during a motorcycle scene in another film. In addition, actress Ellen Bernstein seriously injured her back while filming a scene where she falls over backwards after her possessed daughter slaps her. This scene was left in the film. I think that's enough 70s for me. Well, it doesn't get any better in the 80s either. Assistant cameraman Rodney Mitchell was killed and eight other crew members were injured when their camera truck flipped while rehearsing a chase scene for the Dukes of Hazard. Daryl Hannah chipped her right elbow in eight places during a scene where she accidentally slipped on the pavement and smashed the window of a parked car while filming Blade Runner. Steven Seagal, who was the fight choreographer for Never Say Never Again, another James Bond movie, broke Sean Connery's wrist while training. Good work, Seagal. That's, <laughs> wow. that's what you were hired to do. <laughs> and he back off that <laughs> yeah. a little bit. Calm down. In June 1983, while filming Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom in London, Harrison Ford herniated a disc in his back, forcing him to fly back to Los Angeles for an operation. But because he's Harrison Ford, he returned a short six weeks later. Harrison pops up a little bit later on, too. The next year, while Michael, this is a very famous one, actually. The next year, while Michael Jackson was filming a television commercial with his siblings at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles, a faulty pyrotechnic went off too early and set his hair on fire, inflicting second and third degree burns to his scalp and body. I believe this was a Pepsi commercial that he was doing? Yes. Um, It is widely believed by unnamed sources that this accident resulted in Jackson's addiction to painkillers and obsession with plastic surgery until his death in 2009. After Sylvester Stallone and Dolph Lundgren agree to actually spar with each other for a more realistic feel during a scene. Naturally, this went poorly. (laughs) Stallone was airlifted from Canada to St. John's Hospital (laughs) in Santa Monica, California, and was placed in intensive care for eight days after receiving a hard punch to his chest, causing his heart to swell and his blood pressure to exceed 200. I don't think hard punch is the correct way of explaining what happened to him. That's like a, a Captain America punch. Are we sure that like Dolph Lundgren wasn't actually James Caan in disguise? <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard to say. Bruce Willis lost two thirds of his hearing after firing a gun loaded with extra loud blanks from underneath the table for Die Hard. That's wild. Why are there blanks that are extra loud you can know. do that in post like, why would you do yeah it feels like a mistake it's easy to add gunshots and post listen i'm gonna do it right now in the podcast see it's not hard pew, pew. during a hoverboard stunt scene uh i think in a, our shared favorite movie mm-hmm. back to the future 2 stunt woman cheryl wheeler dixon accidentally bounced off a pillar before falling 30 feet onto concrete she sustained serious facial and wrist injuries i can't believe she didn't die like that's wild not to be outdone while filming back to the future 3 michael j fox lost consciousness for a few seconds get this after being actually hanged oh before an extra realized that he was being asphyxiated and the noose was lowered. How was this occurring? <laughs> I don't fully I get that uh, part. Uh, uh. March of 1993, Brandon Lee was accidentally shot and killed in North Carolina with a 44 Magnum while filming The Crow. The gun was intended to fire blanks, but contained an actual bullet left behind after a dummy round had been inserted and then removed. This is one of those cult things, like cult movie type situations, The Crow, because of this. Like, it makes it... It's got this, like, extra status because of everything. Have you ever seen that movie? Uh, I have not. I have. It's interesting. Several extras were injured during Titanic's sinking scene where passengers fell and hit parts of the ship. Injuries ranged from a broken ankle to cracked ribs, a fractured cheekbone, and a ruptured spleen. Kate Winslet suffered pneumonia from filming the water scenes after she refused to wear a wetsuit under her dress. And in one scene in which she was running in the sinking ship, Winslet's coat snagged on a gate, pulling her down and nearly drowning her. I'm not surprised that this was a dangerous movie to produce. Um, Turns out that's the case. I, however, can top that. On the final night of shooting Titanic, uh, 80 cast and crew members were hospitalized after pranksters spiked the clam chowder at the catering area with PCP. What? (laughs) (laughs) What? They were mad that Jack drowned. I guess guess so. There was space on the door. (laughs) 
She could have just moved over. On the set of Triple X, a stunt double was killed during a repelling scene, falling to his death. Daniel Craig knocked out two of his front teeth while filming a fight scene in Casino Royale. The damage was so severe that a dentist had to be flown in from London to fix caps onto his mouth. James Bond movies are really dangerous. Well, I mean, you'd expect so, though, right? Like, I think that's, yeah. you know. Uh, this is one that I'm sure everyone remembers. Mm-hmm. In September 2006, Steve Irwin was fatally pierced in the chest by a stingray while snorkeling the Great Barrier Reef while filming his television show. And another one in the same year, Richard Hammond crashed a dragster at 288 miles per hour while filming Top Gear. Hammond sustained serious brain trauma, suffering loss of memory, depression, and difficulties of emotional experiences. This is a huge story in the UK. Um, and there is a book about this that is like a second biography written by him and his wife. Um, we could put a link to it in the show notes. It's really good. Like if you like Top Gear or like Richard Hammond, you should check out that book. It's fantastic. It's written by the both of them. It's a cool. Good book. It it is good. I've read it. It's it's really great. A cameraman was killed in 2007 on the set of The Dark Knight as he rode in a pickup truck driving parallel to a stunt car. However, the pickup missed a 90-degree turn and crashed into a tree. An extra underwent brain surgery and was permanently paralyzed in one side of her body after being hit by a steel cable at high speed on the set of Transformers Dark of the Moon. Uh, Our friend... Sylvester Stallone is back. In The Expendables 3, he suffered a serious back injury from a bad fall, requiring surgery that involved adding metal plates to his spine. Whoa. It's, it's, uh, it seems really serious. Yes. In a separate scene, Antonio Banderas sustained a knee injury, and then a truck driven by Jason Statham lost its brakes and fell into the Black Sea. The actor was able to swim out of the accident unharmed. Of course. Jason Statham wouldn't be harmed. He's no. He's unbreakable. While filming Star Wars The Force Awakens, our friend Harrison Ford fractured a bone in his leg while filming at Pinewood Studios after a hydraulic door fell on him. Director J.J. Abrams then also injured his back while helping lift the hydraulic door off of Ford's leg. I think we can just end it there. I just want to make my YouTube videos safe and sound in my office. I just want to make podcasts. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to go on a real set. Ever. Happy holidays, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) If for some reason you want to read more about this, there's a ton of stuff on this list that didn't make it in the show because this list just goes on forever. You can find a link to it uh, and to that book at relay.fm slash ungeniused slash 40. You can get in touch with us there as well. You can send us an email. You can find us on Twitter. The show is at ungeniused. You can follow Mike at I-M-Y-K-E and you can find me there as I-S-M-H. Until our next horrific accident, Mike, <laughs> say goodbye. Goodbye. Adios. <laughs>